Okay, we are live, so whenever you're ready. Welcome to SUNY Erie Pause, our weekly virtual session geared towards students. So you can get the most up-to-date information on what's happening at SUNY Erie. I am Jamie Smith, Dean of Liberal Arts and Science, here with my host, Katrina Hill Cheatham, Dean of Students at City Campus, as well as Amy Yoder, Dean of Students at South Campus, Jason Perry, Dean of Students at North Campus. And of course, we have Paula. Paula is our Director of Marketing, Paula Sandy, who is here to facilitate and answer any questions that we have. As a quick, quick well, logistical note, if you have any questions, please type them right in the chat box as we go throughout the show. We'll be monitoring them and we will be answering them as we go forward. Katrina? Thank you, Jamie. To my uh, co-host there, thank you so much. At this time, we are happy to introduce our college president, Dr. Dan Hukoi, who, as usual, will share a few minutes of very informative information with us. Dr. Hukoi. Thanks, Katrina and Jamie. And good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our final, our last full Wednesday pause of the spring 2020 semester. So we are gonna close up shop as the semester is winding down. And thanks again for tuning in this week as well as previous weeks. Um, I'm, I know this is the most exciting um, event you have for your week because you're stuck at home and there's nothing to do and this is the break spot of your week. Um, well, this is it. One more week and a most interesting semester in college history will be over. When you are in your rocking chair, you'll be telling your grandkids about this unprecedented time, and they'll let you know that they saw a program about the 2020 pandemic on the History Channel. Um, today on Wednesday Pause, we'll be offering you some tips on taking your exams online a little later. But right now, I wanna urge you to keep your focus to the finish line. You've maintained your momentum for the past six weeks to get to this point, and there's only one final hurdle left, and you will have made it through. So as a campus community, we are incredibly proud of all you've accomplished during this challenging semester. I know none of it has been easy, but you're going to make it through. And for all of our faculty and staff, I want to personally thank them for their devotion to our students and each other. And we've made it through together. And again, students, thank you for your patience with us, with all the changes you've had to experience, and the faith in yourselves to push through these challenges. I know none of us have signed on for this, but despite everything, I really believe that we're going to be stronger for what we've endured together. So as this is the last pause for the spring semester, I have a few final notes. One, if you are graduating, I truly hope you will remember your time at SUNY Erie fondly. I know this isn't the way you would have chosen to end your time here, but I do hope you reflect back on your entirety of your degree and look at your positive experiences, uh, the friends you've made, all the relationships with faculty, and to look at your experience as a whole. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are returning this fall, the college will likely be in a new normal. We are not sure yet what that's going to look like. And like every academic institution, we're in the same situation throughout the country, right? We don't know exactly how quickly things are gonna open up. And it's county by county. And I know for every county, um, there's seven criteria we're looking at uh, before we will open up completely. And that's just because we wanna ensure that you have a safe environment while you're pursuing your education. And finally, this is my last pause with you as your president. Please know that I will not easily forget my time here at SUNY Erie 
It's been an incredible experience with wonderful relationships. And I will take a lot of fond and funny memories with me. Um, so thank you all for allowing me to be part of the Suniari family for this, these past three years. Thank you, everyone. Dr. Hakoi, thank you so much for those words. You mentioned that, as you mentioned, this is the last week of the semester. That also means that we're one week away from the celebration of our class of 2020 students. What can students and their families expect to learn that event? Right, well, we are T minus one week to our virtual celebration of the class of 2020. So save the date for next Wednesday, May 20th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So this, celebra ce this celebration, which will be virtual, will feature heartfelt messages from individuals who are part of our college community. So that includes our administrators, our faculty, our staff, and also elected officials, including U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer. And then we'll also have SUNY Chancellor Christina Johnson. And they've all taken time in the past few weeks to send messages to include in your celebration. So if you're graduating, your name will scroll across the screen by program, similar to the way they're listed in the program book each year. We will also honor the annual award winners and we'll have photo reels recapping some of the events that took place on campus this year. And I want to convey a special thanks to Paula Sandy for organizing this with our IT people, Bob Germoni, Nick, and Ryan. Uh, Joe Landine is there somewhere in the mix. So thanks to them for having the creativity and capacity to create this virtual commencement on your behalf. So this celebration will be streamed on our YouTube channel, SUNY Aries YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook feed. So there's no excuse for not being on hand or in attendance. We're also encouraging you to host virtual watch parties with your friends and family um, at a safe distance, obviously, and to post comments and photos of your favorite grads during the celebration. So we'll be sending out a separate email to our campus community with details on where to watch, how to post, and other details on what you can expect. So more to come. Thank you, Dr. Hakoi. Last week uh, on our Wednesday pause, you mentioned uh, and gave us some really insightful information as it relates to the CARES Act funding. Uh, what do students need to know now that we have been a week into this process regarding uh, the funding that SUNY Erie has been awarded? I'd like to think I always give insightful information. <laughs> This one might have been more insightful than others, this little piece about CARES. Um, as I mentioned last week, SUNY Erie expects to receive federal CARES funding. That is designated for our students. So our financial aid office is currently preparing to make these awards available to eligible students. Now, this is the important thing. To be eligible for funding, it's imperative meaning it's absolutely necessary that you have completed a FAFSA application for the 2019-2020 academic year. So again, I can't stress enough that you have to complete the FAFSA even if you've never received financial aid before. The FAFSA is actually how the federal government identifies that you are legitimately a student. So you have to complete your FAFSA if you want any CARES funding. Okay, if you have not completed a FAFSA application for this year, you can still do so. But the deadline for you to complete this and for us to receive your final and completed application is May 19th. That is next Tuesday before our commencement celebration on the Wednesday. Um, so check your email from this Monday or visit our COVID-19 webpage for details as to how to apply for that FAFSA. 
Thank you, Dr. Hukoi. Um, so at this point in time, we would love to really review our trivia question again. And we'll get that trivia question loaded for you. What was the name of the first president of SUNY Erie who served from 1946 to 1954? As always, the first person to type the correct answer in the chat box has a swag bag coming to them as soon as we return to campus, as well as gift cards to the bookstore, courtesy of our Auxiliary Services Corporation and Follett. So now we have some information. We have Amy Yoder, who's going to give us some information about how students can be successful in this time. Amy? Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back again. So as we are approaching final exams, especially since we are online, I wanted to give you some tips and hints of what to do before the exam as well as after. So starting off with before, you really should read and understand the test gu guidelines. That means understanding what time that test is being offered, if it's at a particular time and date, and to be prepared and ready for it. Or if you can take it at any given time during, your, during the week. I think that's super important to understand that and make sure that you have that built into your schedule. You should also know the test format. Is it going to be multiple choice, fill in, short answer essay? This gives you an idea of how long it will take you to complete an exam and be in a good, comfortable place to know that you have the test formatting down. You should also prepare to test yourself. There's some great programs out there. Do a Google search of ways that you can do an online test yourself based on answers and test prep questions that you've received from your instructor. You should always check your computer. I'm sure we're all noticing now that technology glitches do happen, but make sure that your computer is fully functioning. It's charged. I've run into that problem too, where I had my computer and it wasn't charged or at least plugged in. Make sure your audio is working. You have a good keyboard. Your mouse has got batteries in it if you have a, a wireless mouse so that you're all set for the test. Study your class materials. That is super important. Even though a test may be open book, it still doesn't mean you shouldn't look over your material. Make sure that you have logical piles around you, especially if it's a cumulative exam that you have them in order chronologically in the way the class has been run. I think that's super important to make sure that you have that prep and material right in front of you. Carve out a quiet test taking spot, both minimal distractions. I know that's challenging, especially in full households and everything else, but it's super important to kind of distance yourself from kids, other family members, animals, so that you can focus solely right on an exam. Determine when you'll take that test. I think that's always important regardless. So if I have a morning exam, that means I'm getting up a little bit earlier, looking over my material. If it's later in the day, which is usually when I get tired, might be something I wanna take a walk beforehand or have some energy and exercise before that so that I'm prepped, ready, and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to take that exam. Gather all that you need to take the test. So if it's a math exam and you need that scrap paper and a pencil to kind of map out a, a problem and get the answer down, have that there with you too. Paper and pen is still important when taking online exams. You need to jot notes, you need to question things. You need to make a little notation to yourself saying, I'm gonna come back to that question, especially if it's open book too. Say, hmm, I might wanna go back to this chapter, but I wanna continue on with the test as they move forward. And most of all, take a deep breath as you're prepping for that test. Think in your head, okay, whew, where am I struggling? Go back through. Use those materials that your faculty and your staff have given you to study from. Now, as you move into the online exam, keep an eye on the clock. So a lot of the times the online exams have some time component to it. So just keep that in mind, not to panic you, but more to keep yourself prepared and on the right page. As you did that test prep, you know how long some questions are going to take you. So keeping an eye on the clock gives you an even heel as you're going through the test. Don't leave the test page. This is so important. So even if it's open book or you're able to use Google, for example, open up a different tab. Don't use the same tab that you're on the test because guess what? The test is going to close and you don't want that to happen. If you run into technical problems while you're taking your on exa online exam, don't panic. That is the worst thing you can do. Just make a note of it. If you can screenshot 
what's going on and immediately contact your instructor and let them know. You may also want to consider putting an ITS help desk ticket in too. Our ITS staff have been fabulous during this whole transition to online and they'd be willing to help you as well. But it's important to communicate any technical problems with your professor and document it as well. Check your work before you submit. I run into this with my own son who's now transitioned from elementary school to online. He rushes through it and he hits that submit button before checking his work. Get that into your time as you're planning to do your exam is to check your work before you hit the submit button because once it goes, it's gone. And don't forget to click submit. I can't tell you how many students over the years have contacted me and said, I did the test, I closed it out, but forgot to hit the submit button. If you can take these tips and hits and just go through them before you start finals, I think you'll get a lot of help out of them. Thanks, Katrina. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Amy. That was excellent information. Now I would like to hand uh, the program over to Jamie, who will go into a little bit of discussion about summer enrollment. Jamie? Yes, um, I'd like to point out that we are still running summer classes. So as every year, most of our summer classes are online. Summer session one is going to be completely online. Summer session one classes start May 21st and they run through July 2nd. Summer session two, which still has a lot of online classes that you're already, um, which are already open and you can go ahead and enroll for, runs from July 6th to August 12th. Registration is open and we, this is a perfect time for you to retake a course that you may want a better grade in or also to get a jump start on next semester's curriculum. As always, we advise you to talk to your faculty advisor and or counselor about what courses would be most uh, beneficial for your academic career. Thank you. Oh, Amy, speaking of that, how is Access for the Summer going to work? So Access for the Summer is going to work exactly how we're doing right now, one day a week on each campus. So on Tuesdays, City Campus is open, Wednesdays, North Campus is open, and Thursday, South Campus is open. That means we will have computers available in each of the cafeterias for use of students. So one of the things that did come up is that I've had a couple students contact me that they still have items on campus that they need to pick up. So what we'd like you to do is contact your faculty member or your department and let them know that you might have a kit or some kind of material that you need to pick up on campus. They will make arrangements for you to come in on one of those open campus days to pick that in that those documents or those materials up. What should you do if you need to return a rent a textbook? Well, Follett, it luckily is offering free shipping to students. So that means you can return your rented textbooks for free through the mail. What I would encourage you to do is contact your campus bookstore so that you can make arrangements with them. They will walk through the process of printing out a label for you to mail that textbook back to them. And what is being done to make sure the campus is clean and safe? We're doing an excellent job. And we have, as a special guest, someone here to talk about that in more detail. So I wanna pass it over to Rick Rojek, who's gonna go through what's going on in campus. Yes, thank you, Amy. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Okoy and everybody else. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to go over a few of the uh, procedures that we do uh, take to clean our campus and make sure every all our staff and students stay, uh, stay safe. Um, we've moved our housekeeping staff to 16 hours a day. That's two eight hour shifts per day uh, now. We've increased um, moving into the bathrooms and cleaning everything, sanitizing everything. Um, we have purchased hospital grade cleaners uh, by 3M, uh, extremely Potent, uh, very good cleaners, 100% kill rate on the COVID-19 uh, virus. Um, we've also purchased sanitizing wipes for everybody to use, um, as wiped on computer desktops and um, uh, keypads. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that uh, also uh, we've also purchased. Um, like to call our Ghostbuster gun, 
everybody can see that. This is an electrostatic sprayer. Uh, this sprays a chlorinated virus killer. Um, it's 100% effective on COVID-19. And what this does is this is helping us take care of all the doorknobs, rails, uh, stair railings, um, just about everything. All our hard non-porous surfaces, sinks, toilets, uh, all our elevators are being sprayed down daily with these. So that's, uh, that's it. We've increased our, our thing. We're trying, we can't wait till the students get back. And um, that, that's all I have. Thanks, Derek. And we really appreciate all the hard work you and your team are doing to keep us safe. Uh, Katrina, want to go back to the his trivia question? Yes, we do. We have our trivia uh, question. Let me read that again. What was the name of the first president of SUNY Erie from, who served from 1946 through 1954? And the answer is, Paula, would you like me to answer? Read the answer. Richard R. Dry. That's correct, Katrina. So President Drive served for eight years when the college was first um, started back in 1946, and it was first um, approved by the legislature. So we, uh, we obviously, President McCoy told us that this will be his last pause with us for this, um, as, his, as our president. So we'll be in the search for our 12th president in the college's history, who will likely be taking office here at the college during our 75th anniversary year next year in 2021. So something to look forward to. Um, congratulations to Lynn and Alec, who both um, typed in with uh, President Dry as our first president. So we'll have a swag bag waiting for you guys, or we'll be sh shipping them to your house when we're back on campus soon. Thank you, Paula. And you know what would make a great trivia question? Who would be the first SUNY ERI president to participate on our Wednesday pause? That would be a great question for our next year. Sounds good to me. What a great way uh, to end the session. Um, thank you so much, Paula. And so now I would like to hand over this segment to Jason. Is that better? I, sorry, I forgot to uh, unmute my mic. It's good to see you um, here back for our last Wednesday pause. I'm very excited for you all to be finishing up your semester and the last couple little reminders and things to engage with. This Friday, um, the Student Government Association will be hosting its final town hall meeting online at noon, being hosted by Jordan Reiner, who is the president of the South um, Student Government Association. And the guests will be me, um, who I'm sure you're sick of seeing and hearing from. Um, also, our uh, folks from the Career Services Center and one of the captains for the Chancellor's eSports Challenge uh, to talk about his experience and what it will look like to bring eSports to SUNY Erie. One final reminder for you is that if you did borrow a laptop or um, any of the access devices, they're due back by the 19th. Please try to remember to bring them in their original packaging. It's easier for us to keep track of them that way. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that um, we're here for you. Uh, the college is still open and um, we are here to assist you. So when you bring, if you do bring a laptop back, we just got a question asking where they can be returned, bring them, um, back to where you checked them out into um, one of the open campuses on the day that it's opened uh, to the um, cafeteria where you checked it out originally. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Patrina. Thanks, Jason. We really, we really, really appreciate all you guys do to keep our students engaged and your work with Student Government Association. Um, so that's how we're gonna end this semester. Katrina, can you give us some insight about what it's gonna look like going forward? Maybe a, fall, a glance at fall? 
Yes. Um, most importantly, uh, our students should definitely take note of the fact that it is crucial to make sure that you touch, touch base with both your academic uh, program advisor as well as your program advisor. So if you happen to be a student that belong to a program such as Say Yes, EOP, Middle College, et cetera, it is really important to make sure that you touch base in order to get ready for fall and to not only select your courses and talk about your progression in your academic program, but also to make sure that you complete all of the startup activities that students are required, such as uh, submitting your immunization paperwork, making sure that your tuition, um, your financial aid is applied to your tuition bill, and to make sure that all of those issues are taken care of before the start of the semester. You also want to make sure that you touch base with uh, looking up those advisors that you have registered or instructors that you have registered for your fall courses. You're gonna want to know uh, basically what type of books and supplies and materials that you will need for the fall semester. We really encourage you to do this initial planning over the summer to connect with everyone that you need to, to plan so that when school starts in the fall, you are standing on a firm foundation and can set the foundation for you to be a successful student. It is so important not to wait until the semester start to really begin these tips, but it's important for you to plan over the summer and to progressively plan and take your time before the semester starts. We want you to be successful and we also want you to contact our student support service centers, such as the libraries, uh, working with the tutoring labs, checking on everything, um, even remotely, so that you will know all of the support services that are out there for you to take advantage of and to register and apply for these services before school starts. These are all the things that a student who is serious about their academic program should do and who is really concerned that they put their best foot forward for the fall semester. So those are some tips just to get you started. Uh, any of our colleagues, our faculty staff would love to speak with our students to really make sure that you're on the right track. So please reach out to any of us. We are there to assist you and to help you be successful. So All right. we want to thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, I had my microphone uh, muted. So uh, thank you, uh, Jamie, for tossing that to me to talk about successful tips for the fall semester. I also want to really briefly talk about our COVID-19 website. Uh, one of our technicians will put our site on the screen for you. Our COVID-19 website is full of information and updates for our students, faculty, and staff. It's so important that you visit and bookmark this website. Everything is listed here as it relates to all of the changes that we have experienced as a college and as a community. You can find the most up-to-date information about offices, services, um, all the how-tos, including technological uh, support services, as well as every service that we offer. So please take advantage to bookmark the site and to visit it frequently. And at this time, I, which is my favorite time, I say this every week, we would like to really talk about and point out any questions that students and staff have submitted to our chat window. Paula, do we have questions? 
Uh, we do. Actually, Jason answered one of them already that was out there about re where to return devices. So we're to, um, make sure that you're returning your devices back to the cafeteria where you picked them up originally. Uh, the other question that has came, uh, came up is regarding the CARES funding. Um, and they want to know if a student has already filled out the FAFSA, what do they need to do to re receive the CARES money? Um, I'm guessing I'm going to answer this one too. Um, so, so students, look, if you've already got a FAFSA on file with us, you will actually receive notice from the college. You don't need to do anything else initially. Um, the college will be doing outreach to students who have FAFSAs on file because we are certifying students as we speak um, who are on file with us now for uh, what the eligibility is and what steps you need to take moving forward. So I strongly encourage students to pay attention to your email account because you will be getting notification from the college on what steps you need to take moving forward. Um, but for right now, if you've got a FAFSA on file, step one for you is complete. All right. And that's it, we are having questions. No other questions, great. Thank you so much, Paula. And now I would like to ask uh, President Hokoy, do you have any final words for us? And this time it will definitely be final words as it relates to the Wednesday Paul session. Thank you, Petrina. And, and thank you, or maybe Jamie mentioning that one of the privileges of becoming president of SUNY Erie is that you will be one of the trivia questions in the future. I, I had never thought of that. So I'm right up there with, Ricky Dick Fry or Dry, um, but he got to put a time capsule when he left in the North Campus Cornerstone. So I don't know at what point, this was 60 years ago. At what point, Paula, do you think we can open that Cornerstone capsule? I actually think we should open it before you leave next month. So. Um, and I think I should be a trivia question, too, because what, who, shouldn't I be the person who's out there? Is, who started the Wednesday pause? <laughs> That's right. That's true. That's true. I just want to wish everyone good luck uh, in their final week of the semester. And congratulations to all those who will graduate next week. And we look forward to seeing you and your comments during our virtual commencement ceremony. So thank you, everyone. All right, thank you so much, President Hukoi. And actually, that was me, President Hukoi, who recommended the trivia question for you. <laughs> All right, so thanks to each of our guests that we had this week. Uh, we are so appreciative and fortunate that you were able to come on our last pause session and give such important information. And to our audience, primarily our students, faculty, and staff. We appreciate you joining us for our last pause session. And for those of you that have joined us for the last three weeks, we especially thank you for your support. Um, it is really important that we just like to go out and note to you that we will be on a little bit of a hiatus for the summer, but we have some very exciting activities planned for you to keep to keep you updated regarding the most important information uh, for faculty, staff, and students. And of course, Paula Sandy will be the creative mind behind all of those activities. And also just to remind you that we have all types of activities that we will share with you as well as communication to keep you up to date um, during the summer. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Stay safe. And to the class of 2020, congratulations. congratulations. Good job. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Be safe. <laughs>